Hello guys, how are we all doing today? Well, it is Boxing Day today, so I hope all of you had a wonderful Christmas. We had the pleasure of uh, visiting my brother's girlfriend's inn. It was spectacular. I didn't bring my camera because my batteries died, but uh, next year if we go there, I'll be sure to film it. So I also hope you enjoy that big feeding video that I did. That was the biggest one I ever did, 62 teas. That's nearly half my collection. And I'm just glad <laughs> I didn't get bit by that pea fasciata. That was not good. So, yeah, that was pretty scary. And uh, so today's videos, uh, we're going to do a Mythbuster video today, right now. And uh, I guess if I have time, I'm going to uh, transfer those uh, Bioratum slings because uh, they're starting to get way, way bigger. At least this one here, I removed the cricket two days ago because it didn't eat. And this one too, that's getting big too. Okay, so now the more, the next popular tea that I'm going to cover, it's probably one that everyone's been requesting me to do, is the Haplopama species. You know, why not? Okay, so again, the same uh, procedures uh, in the uh, previous um, Mythbuster video with the LPs. So. Alright, so let's get started. So I'm going to be talking about two teas in specific because uh, these are the only Haplopamas that I have. But this will also apply to the other species of the Haplopama, you know, the uh, Minax, uh, the Schmidty, both uh, gold color form and regular color form. Uh, the Haplopama Abostriatum and as well as the Longi Peeps. Okay, so this one here, the Cobalt Blue, which is probably the most universal common name. I actually like this name because at least it doesn't really differ from country to country. It's pretty universal. And this one here, Vietnamese Ur Tiger, which describes the H. Von Worthy. Okay, so here are the Haplopalmas, the Latin names. Haplopalma, that's pretty easy to uh, figure out. Lividum and Von Worthy. And as another like uh, slang that we called the haplopelmos, we usually call them haplo, which is pretty easy to figure out. Okay, now the cost, the availability, wild caught, your cat to bread, and the size. Okay, so about this cobalt blue, the H. lividum, you could mainly find them, I've seen them quite, quite a few times in pet stores, but you will probably find them more readily available on online dealers, and it really depends on the price of what they sell them. Uh, I believe Tarantula Canada had uh, sold like half inch spiralings going for around $35 and then three inch female for $100. Whereas you can go to a pet store and get it for $60. But um, in pet stores, usually they sell wild caught specimens and in dealers, they sell captive bred. It's much more better to get a captive bred than a wild caught because uh, with a wild caught specimen, you don't know exactly how old it is. Uh, it could live for um, six months, a year, five years, ten years, but we don't know. So at least with cat the breads, you know exactly how, what age they are if the dealer knows, and you can be able to figure out from that. Okay. Okay. Lifespan. Yeah, I guess I'll go for lifespan. Uh, males generally live around three to four years and females 12 to 15 years so it's usually the females that live the longest because the males are just there to uh, breed and yeah sucks to live a tea life with a male okay so availability I describe that cost yeah now about their sizes well typical H lividum size is probably around five to five and a half inches probably that's the most typical size. For a Von Worthy, th these are actually one of the bigger ones. Uh, they get having a six to seven inch leg span. I think mine is around six, six and a half inches. Uh, but the H. Lividum is probably the smaller of the genus, but it's also the most beautiful too. Okay, so care sheet and enclosure setup. That's the next one. Okay, so this is really a typical Haplopelma species. This is uh, my Lividum setup. Honestly, a critter keeper like this at a pet store uh, will cost you around uh, 22 You probably can get it for a lot cheaper at Walmart if they have a pet department. This is really fine. All you have to do, it's very simple. 
and it's probably the most boring setup that you can have for an AT and it, and it works so well. Let me get my flashlight so we can uh, see the T. Okay, so here is the T. Uh, let me just put on macro so you can see what she looks like. As you can see, the females, this is a five inch female named Midna, uh, wore up, fortunately passed away. So females are very beautiful in my opinion. Um, they have blue, electric royal blue legs all around the body and they have like a tan gray carapace. And males, males are a little bit different. They're kind of like the duller of the, of the th two. Uh, the males, are like a dull gray color. Sometimes they have little stripes on the legs. As far as I know, they do not have tibial hooks, but they do have bubbles and pedipalps. I actually have a picture of one right here. Uh, this is from uh, giantspiders.com website. And my camera is not focusing properly, so you could tell the female how blue it is. And here's the male. So I, here's the little stripes I was talking to you about. Uh, there's no tubal hooks on the first pair of legs. Usually they will be around here. And they do have bulbous pedipalps. So you could tell a lot of sexual dimorphism in each of them. I don't know about the other species. Probably they do show it. But uh, I'm really not a fan of Haplopelma species because uh, you'll see why. Okay, now about the cage setup. Of, like I uh, was going on, like, all you simply do is um, if you're going to get a critter keeper, always have a water dish. I uh, have to give some water and take at least cover at least half the enclosure with uh, substrate. Uh, I personally recommend for this species uh, potting soil with vermiculite mix. So all you do is put your um, potting soil, fill about maybe halfway to three quarters. You don't don't want to put too much in there because if you're doing cage maintenance, at least uh, the tea will uh, stay put in there and uh, just mix it with take some vermiculite you can get it at the plant store just put like uh, three handfuls in there scoop it up and mix it and there you go now these teas are so-called pet holes for one reason the reason why i don't really provide any hiding place is that they make their own in nature haplopelma lividums will dig up to around six to ten inches into the ground maybe even more in nature but they really just stay down in there and just literally do nothing all day so if you like a beautiful tea but you also like to see it very often I really don't recommend you getting this one if you want as beautiful blue like this I suggest a green bottle blue at least you can see that one all the time okay so about handability I really do not recommend handling this species whatsoever uh, because they are extremely nasty tempered uh, they will move at an incredible fast speed and uh, they will attack anything that moves I once saw my T uh, do a threat posture and <laughs> she did not let go for at least a half an hour before she decided to uh, say okay threats over and she goes back into their burrow but once t uh, they established a burrow they're rather calm and uh, if anything frightens them, uh, they will just go down in their burrow and just uh, literally hide under there. They're not really that aggressive once they establish their burrow. But once, uh, if they don't have a burrow in there, uh, they can get really pissy. So please do not, like in pet stores, I've seen them. They have substrate about here, like, like very small. Do not do this because um, your lividum will get very stressed and will uh, uh, probably even die, probably. So not good. Okay, and then for typical like uh, five, six inch, seven inch haplopalma, I don't recommend shoebox enclosures because they're not very deep. You need a little, t you could have a little tall enclosure for her, or you could just take a little five gallon tank and uh, just put some substrate in there and and I included a cave and uh, she just loves it in there. Sometimes I see her uh, near the water dish, but you do have to keep them very humid. Uh, they like it around uh, 80 to 85% humidity. Heat is uh, pretty much the same like in all my teas. 
uh, keep them uh, 78 uh, during the night time and around 82 degrees uh, during the day. Okay, now for recommendations. As I said, because of their uh, aggressive behavior, also I forgot to mention they have very potent venom. Uh, these are one of the multibiters. They will bite more than once, so really be careful. So just, for, just because for this reason, I really don't recommend uh, these species for a beginner. I recommend them for an experienced owner that has dealt with much more aggressive species like uh, the P. Lagardi and the OBT. Okay, so now for breeding. Well, I haven't really know much about breeding this species since I never had a male before, but from what I saw in arachnoboards, uh, they're kind of a mix. Uh, some people had success, some people don't. Uh, breeding on the egg sac count, it's probably around 100 to 125. So that's pretty good. And overall review, it's a great species, very colorful. Too bad it hides, but uh, other than that, it's a recommended buy and it's pretty cheap for a, a blue tarantula. They go for $60 while caught as an adult female. So the next Miss Buster video of thinking of doing the OBT, I'm probably not going to take her out because uh, <laughs> she is really fast. But uh, yeah, and then I'll start going in alphabetical order all the uh, genuses and covering as uh, detailed uh, videos as I can about them. So I do hope you enjoyed this Miss Buster video. I hope you enjoyed that uh, awesome feeding video that I did. And wish you happy holidays once again. Alright guys, see you later.